here. In this video, we're going to be working on rounding and estimation. So let's begin with this number here, 28,995,881. And our first problem is we want to round to the nearest hundred. So let's make sure we remember our place values. So this is the ones place and then the tens and then the hundreds. Then we have the thousands the ten thousands, the hundred thousands, the millions, and the ten millions. So when we know we want to round to the hundreds, we're going to take this number and I'm going to circle the place value that I want to round to. So I want to round to the hundreds place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to circle the digit that's in the hundreds place. I'm also going to underline the digit just to the right. So now take a look at your digit that you underlined. Notice that it is five or bigger, and it is. So what we're gonna do is we're going to bump up the number we circled. Now, all of these numbers that I didn't circle or underline, and they're to the left, they stay the same. Remember, the digit that we are circling is going to get bumped up, so that becomes a 9, and all the digits to the right become zeros. So this is our final answer here, 28,995,900. Now, let's do one more. Okay, we want to round same number, but we want to round to the ten thousands. So take our number, just like we did before, and we're going to circle the place value we want to round to. So we want to round to the ten thousands. So that's this number, and underline the digit just to the right. Notice that it is five or higher, so it's going to bump up this number tricky part is when you bump up nine, you have to make it 10, right? Which in turn bumps up this number. Well, that's a nine too. So it bumps up this number. So tricky. So this number is going to stay the same. So we've got a two here. We're bumping up the eight to a nine. Now, when we bumped this one up from nine became, Z, became 10, right? And then we bumped this one up, became Oops, not that comma there. <laughs> and then the five, any number after our circled digit becomes zero. So we get 29 million there. Let me write it without my mistake on the comma there. 29 million. That's a little tricky one because when we bumped up this number in the 10 thousands place, it became 10, which forced us to bump this one up as well. It also became 10, which forced us to bump up this one. That's a little tricky when you have nines in play there. Okay, let's take a look at our next number. I've got a decimal here I want to point out, and we want to round to the nearest tenth. So remember our place values. Our tenth and I'm being very deliberate in saying it with that TH, 10th is right here after the decimal place. So if I want to round to the 10th place, then I'm going to circle the 10th place and I'm going to underline the number just to the right of it. Now my number to the right is not five or higher, so it is not bumping up anything. Notice I didn't put the arrow under it. So that means my circled number is going to stay the same. And all of these become zeros. Now with a decimal, we don't have to write all of those zeros, right? So we can just say this becomes 2.7. Okay, let's do one more. Take the same number and we're going to round to the nearest 10,000th. So we said this is the tenths, this is the hundredths, this is the thousandths, and this is the ten thousandths. And I'm making a big deal with those th's there. 
So 2.7182.81828. And again, I'm going to circle that 10 thousandths place. And I'm going to underline the digit just to the right. Now notice this one is five or higher. So we are going to get the bump up. Okay, remember all the digits to the left of your circled value stay the same. We bump up the circled value here, and then all the digits behind it or to the right become zeros. Now with a decimal, the beauty is we don't have to write all of those zeros because they're to the right of the decimal. So we can write the 2.7183. Okay, let's do a word problem to put these rounding skills to good use. Okay, in this problem, we're asked to estimate the total cost of six items if the prices are given here. So what we want to do is the total cost we would get by adding these all up. So what we want to do is to estimate or round these prices and then add them. Okay, so think about it if we're closer to the dollar amount. So if I'm looking at $3.47, is that closer to $3 or closer to $4? Yeah, it's closer to $3. So I'm going to round that to $3. Okay, what about $5.89? Is that closer to $5 or closer to $6? Yeah, it's closer to 6 So I'm rounding that. All right, then I've got $19.98. And again, the question is, is that closer to $19 or $20? And that's closer to 20, good. Okay, let's do $2.03. Is that closer to $2 or $3? It's closer to $2, excellent. Okay, let's do $11.85. Is that closer to $11 or $12? Yes, that's $12. Good, one more. So I've got 23 cents. Is that closer to $0 or $1? Yeah, it's closer to $0. So now that I've rounded them, I can add them up. Three plus six gives me nine. Nine plus 20 is 29. Plus two is 31. 31 plus 12 is $43. And that's going to be my total cost after I estimate it. Okay, so I hope you can see, right, it makes it a lot uh, quicker, simpler, if we round first and then do our calculation. Let's take a look at one more type of rounding word problem. All right, let's take a look at this problem here. We're going to be looking at 600 high school teenagers, and we have this circle graph that lets us know the percentages for the most important problems for these high school teenagers. So we see that 23% uh, of their most important problem is drugs. 22% um, their most important problem is social pressures fitting in. The 11% uh, said that doing well in school was their most important problem. You get the idea. That's kind of what our circle graph here is giving us as far as information. And again, we're looking at 600 high school teenagers. So let's look at the questions. It says, without a calculator, estimate the number of high school teen teenagers for whom doing well in school is the most important problem. So if we look at doing well in school, we were told that was 11%. What I might do, 11% is closer to 10% than 20%. So what I'm doing is I'm rounding 11% to 10%. Then I'm going to take my 10% of 600 teenagers. There's a couple of ways to do 10%. One way is just to divide by 10. So I could do 600 divided by 10 and I would get 60 students. Now, is that the exact answer? No, but we weren't looking for the exact answer. We were looking to estimate. 
Okay, now let's do number two. Without using a calculator, estimate the number of high school teenagers for whom social pressures and fitting in is the most important problem. So social pressures and fitting in was 22%. Now again, 22% is closer to 20% than it is to 30%. So now I can take and find 20% of 600. Again, a couple of ways we can do this. 20% I could do as a decimal. Um, however, I'm not, I don't know if you know this trick, and I, I teach this sometimes, is it's kind of easy to find 10%. So if you want 20%, you can find 10% and just double it. Let me say that again. It's kind of easy to find 10%, right? Just divide by 10, it eliminates a zero. And then so to find 20%, you would just find your 10% and double it. So what I will do here is I'll take my 600 and I'll divide by 10, that will give me 10%. What I mean by that is I'm, I'm just eliminating the zero, right? But I don't want 10%, I want 20%. So now I'm gonna just double that. And that gives me 120 students. And again, I did all of that without a calculator because I was able to round these percents to something that ended in a zero, which made it super easy for me to go find 10%. And then the second problem, I found 10% and simply doubled it. I hope these problems help you with the rounding. Also, um, I did the word problems because I find that's where our rounding becomes super beneficial. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see some more videos like this, or if you have questions, I'm happy to help. Bye for now.